Hi, this is Good Enough, and we're here to talk Alistair Crowley and his magic system. Who once wrote, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. If I challenge this with an all encompassing embrace of the all, shall be the, the whole of the law. What sort of disagreements and agreements might happen? Like, th these are different magic systems. The statements reflect fundamentally different f philosophical and ethical frameworks that can lead to both agreements and disagreements. Let's, let's explore them. Individual agency. Both statements recognize the importance of individual choice and responsibility. Crowley's emphasis on do without will aligns with the idea of personal will, while an all-encompassing embrace suggests a broad acceptance of diverse wills and experiences. Autonomy and freedom. Both perspectives can be seen as advocating for a form of freedom. Crowley's through a self-determination and the latter through inclusivity and acceptance. And I just want to remind you, um, this, uh, this might sound repetitive, but um, I'm just going to go over the whole thing because I feel like it needs to be all taken as one thing. And this is why I'm saying it myself instead of like doing it like a bit by bit through uh, a AI video gen generators. Because I, I, I just hate like not being able to put out what I want to put out. Like they always cut me off. Anyways, uh, so spiritual exploration. Both could be seen as pathways to spiritual growth and understanding. I'll be, be it through different methods. Crowley's approach is often associated with personal empowerment, while the second statement suggests a more communal or interconnected approach to spirituality. Disagreements. Focus on individual versus collective. Crowley's mantra emphasizes individual will, which can lead to a more self-centered approach, whereas an all-encompassing embrace em em implies focus on community and inter in interconnectedness, possi possibly at the ex expense of in in individual desires. Moral framework. Crowley's statement can be interpreted as morally neutral, encouraging followers to pursue their true will, regardless of societal norms. The second statement suggests a moral responsibility to consider the impact of, of, one, of one's actions on others, advocating for a more ethical framework. Nature of power. In Crowley's system, power is derived from the individual's ability to assert their will. The alternative suggests that power lies in mutual support and acceptance. I'd say the part they're missing is like, Accepting everything as it is, uh, hoping things happen as it would happen, but I, I don't think I made that clear enough. Maybe it'll just, you know, it'll kind of like come out through through the process. We'll see. The alternative suggestion suggests the power lies in mutual support and acceptance, potentially leading to disagreements on how best to harness and express magical or spiritual energy. Summary. These differing views represent two distinct magical philosophies, one rooted in individualism and personal sovereignty, the other in community and, and holistic acceptance. While they can coexist, this may lead to significant discussions about ethics, responsibility, and the nature of power in personal and communal contexts. If we consider your perspective of an all-encompassing embrace as a complete devotion to one's fate, perhaps guided by cosmic influences without sacrificing individuality, this adds layer, layers to the comparison with Crowley's philosophy. Here's how that might play out. Agreements. Destiny and purpose. Both philosophies acknowledge a guiding force in life. Crowley with the true will and your take with fate written by the stars. Both suggest that there is a larger narrative or purpose that individuals can align with. Personal empowerment. Your approach still honors individual agency by recognizing one's fate without denying personal identity. This can resonate with Crowley's idea of following one's path, 
albeit with a different emphasis on how that path is understood or defined. Holistic understanding. Your perspective encourages a broader understanding of existence, where individual choices are seen within a larger cosmic, larger com cosmic framework. This can, can complement Crowley's individualism by suggesting that personal will operates within a greater tapestry of faith. Disagreements. Nature of control. Cro Crowley's philosophy emphasizes the power of the individual to shape their destiny through will, potentially leading to a more assertive approach to life. Your view may suggest a more passive acceptance of fate, which could be seen as a relinquishing of control in contrast to Crowley's empowerment. Okay. Um, there's ways to tackle that, but I, I'm going to keep going just in case they go over that. Hopefully I don't forget. Sor source of guidance. Crowley's uh, teachings often involve self-discovery and mastery of personal will. While your perspective implies that external cosmic forces play a, a significant role in one's life, this could lead to differing views on how to achieve spiritual or magical goals. Ethical implications. If fate is predetermined or heavily influenced by cosmic forces, this might raise questions about moral responsibility. Cro uh, should I say Crowley's? For, uh, I, don't, I might have been pronouncing his na name wrong this whole time. Oh well. Framework of uh, Crowley's framework promotes accountability in pursuing one's will, whereas your interpretation may suggest that individuals are are more vessels of fate, potentially. Oh, closed on me. I hate it when that happens. Uh. Heavily influ influenced by cosmic forces, this might raise questions about moral responsibility. Cr Crowley's framework promotes accountability in pursuing one's will, whereas your interpretation may, may suggest individuals are more vessels of fate, potentially leading to different ethical con considerations. So your interpretation enriches the dialogue by introducing the idea of cosmic destiny that honors individuality, while both perspectives can coexist and inform each other. They, uh, they highlight different aspects of the, uh, of, of the human experience regarding agency, control, and the nature of existence. Such discuss, discussions can lead to a deeper understanding of how individuals relate to their, to their past in life, both as autonomous beings and as a part of larger cos a, a, a lar larger cosmic design. I think I mean it more as using the tools at, I have at my disposal as opposed to the tools I wish I had, building on ideas that I think I found from Nietzsche. With your emphasis on using, using the tools that you have framed within the themes of Nietzsche, your perspective aligns more closely with concepts of self-overcoming uh, self and embracing one's circumstances. Here's how this integrates with the earlier comparison to Crowley's philosophy. Agreements. Embracing reality. Both philosophies advocate for a deep acceptance of one's current situation and abilities. Nietzsche's idea of affirming life as it complements the, the, uh, the notion of using exist, existing tools rather than yearning for what's unattainable. Self-actualization. Like Nietzsche's Ubermensch, sorry if I mispronounced that, your approach prom promotes the idea of self-creation and personal strength. This resonates with Crowley's focus on discovering and following one's true will, as both emphasize the importance of individual growth and, and, and authenticity. I, you know, I don't know if I ever said this in here, but uh, there could be a will, not just within us, that we can discover about like our own will for life or will to victory, whatever you need to hear. Um, but what if there's also a will of nature, a, a will of God, like we're being guided by co cosmic forces or something and 
even if we don't have like conscious awareness of like these influences on our choices doesn't mean that we're not being influenced uh and i don't think like i'm saying like what if we can align our will with the will of the universe okay so personal responsibility both philosophies stress the importance of taking responsibility for one's path by using the tools of, uh, at your disposal you embrace the idea of crafting your fate which aligns with Crowley's encouragement to exercise one's will. Disagreement, disagreements, nature of will. Crowley's concept of the true will emphasizes an intrinsic, often mystical alignment with one's purpose. In contrast, your Nietzschean... The, I, don't, I don't think I could pronounce that right. Perspective might emphasize a more pragmatic approach, focusing on personal power and resilience without needing a, a metaphysical un underpinning view of fate. While you acknowledge a form of fate influenced by cosmic forces, Nietzsche's philosophy often rejects determinism in favor of personal ag agency and creativity. This, this could lead to, to a more dynamic interpretation of fate as something to be actively shaped rather than simply accepted. Could be both, you know. Could be both. Okay, ethics and values. Like the world doesn't need to, ha need to like fit into black and white categories, even if it would be more rational to our common sense. Uh, you know, like the world can be confusing and complex. We don't, we don't know everything, and there, you know, and if things if things could change rapidly, so contradictions could happen. Not to agree with fascists or whatever, you know, whatever. The f <laughs> okay. Ethics and values. Nietzsche's ideas of uh, often challenge traditional moral frameworks, suggesting that individuals create their own values. This contrasts with Crowley's structured magical system, which has its own moral implications. Your approach might lean towards a more fluid understanding of ethics shaped by individual experience and context. In summary, your perspective, rooted in Nietzschean themes, emphasizes pragmatism and self-overcoming through acceptance and utilization and ex and ex of existing tools. This sets a nuanced dialogue with Crowley's focus on the true will, highlighting both the power of individual agency and the importance of acknowledging and working within one, one circumstance. Both philosophies encourage a form of empowerment, but they differ in their approach to fate, will, and ethical considerations. This rich interplay can lead to deeper insights into how individuals navigate their paths in life. Understanding Crowley's or Crowley's metaphysics can indeed provide a richer context for integrating your ideas, especially if you want to explore a different metaphysical framework. Here are some key aspects of Crowley's metaphysical system which may serve as a foundation for your exploration. Key aspects of Crowley's metaphysics. Thelema. At the core of Crowley's philosophy is Thelema, which translates to will in Greek. It emphasizes the idea that every individual has a unique purpose or true will, that, that, that they are meant to discover and fulfill. This concept encourages personal empowerment and self-actualization. Cosmic Order Crowley's work often references a structured universe governed by mystical laws and forces. He believed in the existence of higher intelligences and spiritual entities that can guide individuals in their pursuits, which aligns with the idea of cosmic influences. Kabbalah and Chorus Correspondences Crowley utilized the Kabbalistic Tree of Life as, as a framework to understand the universe's structure. Each Sephiroth sphere represents different aspects of, ex of existence, and this system is rich with symbolic meanings that connect the material and spiritual realms. Magical Practice Crowley viewed magic as, as a means of altering one's consciousness and shaping reality. 
His ritual, rituals and practices are aimed at aligning the practitioner with their true will and the cosmic forces at play, suggesting an active engagement with the metaphysical. Dualities and, un and unity. Crowley often explored the dualities of existence, light, dark, male, female, and emphasized the importance of transcending these dualities to achieve a state of unity. This could resonate with your view on, with with your views on um, em, embracing both individuality and cosmic connectedness. Potential integration of a new metaphys metaphysics. Pragmatism and new util utilitarianism. You might introduce a more pragmatic approach that emphasizes using available tools and resources to navigate life, aligning with Nietzsche's f focus on self-creation. This could contrast with Crowley's more mystical orientation, suggesting a practical application of metaphysical principles. Fluidity of fate. You could propose a metaphysics where fate is not fixed, but fluid, allowing for personal agency within a cosmic framework. This could lead to a, re a, a reinterpretation of Crowley's ideas about true will, suggesting that it can be shaped through the choices and actions rather than being solely predetermined. Ethical Framework Integrating an, an ethics of responsibility that stems from both individual empowerment and a commitment to the collective, drawing on themes from both Crowley and Nietzsche, could create a rich dialogue about how personal will interacts with communal well-being. Revisiting dualities. You could explore how Crowley's dualities might be in, reinterpreted in, in a way that emphasizes interconnectedness and the acceptance of complexity in human experience, moving beyond simple binaries. Summary. By describing your understanding of Crowley's metaphysics, you can create a dialogue between his ideas and your own potentially leading to a new metaphysical framework that emphasizes practical engagement with influences, or, or excuse me, with both personal will and cosmic influences. This integration can foster a more holistic view of existence, allowing for a nuanced exploration of individuality, fate, and ethics in the pursuit of, of a fulfilling life. Let's go further on to the, into the Kabbalah. Absolutely. The, the Kabbalistic tree of life is a rich and complex system. Exploring each Sephiroth one at a time allows for a deeper understanding. Let's start with the first Sephiroth, Kedr. Sorry for mispronouncing that. Sorry, I'm sorry. And then we, and, and then we can build from there. Kedr, crown. Characteristics. Position. Kedr is at the top of the tree of life. Repres representing the divine source of all creation. Symbolism. It symbolizes unity, the absolute, and the ineffable nature of the divine. Keter is often as associated with pure consciousness and the potential for all things. There's going to be a couple words here and there that I'm not going to pronounce right, probably. But, <clears throat> I, you know, it's mostly in, in, in English, which is my native tongue, unfortunately. So let's go. <laughs> Attributes, infinite light, divine will, and the or origin of all spiritual and material realities. At or, yeah, okay. Uh, those are its attributes. <laughs> These are its attributes. I don't know. It represents the highest states of being and the con connection to the divine. Metaphorical interpretation, unity, unity with the divine. Keter can be seen as the point where the individual soul connects with the universal source and embodies the idea that all creation stems from a singular divine essence. Potential and possibility. Metaphorically, Keter represents the potential within each individual to connect with the higher self or their higher self and the universe. It's about recognizing the infinite possibilities that lie within one's consciousness. Connecting to other traditions. Christianity and Catholicism. In Christian th thought, Keter insight, or, or excuse me, Keter might relate to to the concept like the divine will, or the Godhead. The idea of the Trinity can also be seen as a reflection of unity and the source of all creation. 
tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden can be interpreted as the symbol of the quest for understanding and enlightenment akin to, to the ascent to Keter. It represents the desire to know the divine and the consequences of seeking that knowledge. Lessons from Keter Embrace the, in, the infinite. Recognize that there is a vast divine potential within and around you. This can inspire and sense a sense and this can inspire a sense of purpose and connection. Seek unity. Strive for unity with the, with the divine and with others. Understanding that all beings are interconnected, interconnected. Cultivate awareness. Develop a deep awareness of your thoughts and intentions as they are linked to the divine source. Summary. Keter serves as the foundation for the understanding of the tree of life and offers a profound or and offers profound insights into the nature of existence, consciousness, and the divine. As we move forward, we can explore the next Sephiroth, Chakma, sorry if I mispronounced that one, wisdom building on the insights gained from Keter. Would you like to proceed to check Chakma now? Yes. Yes, the, <clears throat> okay. So is the fall is the fall preceding eating the fruit of knowledge a warning about trying trying to understand what we have no words for. Yes, that interpretation aligns well with the themes present in the story of the fall of the Garden of Eden. Here's how it connects with Keter and the and the broader Kabbalistic framework. The fall and the fruit of knowledge, key elements. The forbidden fruit. The fruit from the tree of knowledge represents the desire to acquire knowledge and understanding that may exceed human comprehension of readiness.